Hello everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we are fans of board games both new and old. Today we're going to be unboxing Obsession, Pride, Intrigue and Prejudice in Victorian England and its expansion, the Wessex expansion. Um, this comes from Kayanata Games, or KG Games. Um, it's designed by Dan Halligan. It's for one to four players um, who all look very grand and dandy here in their little picture. It's supposed to take 30 to 19 minutes to play. So first things first, what's this game about? I I don't really know. <laughs> I know that's not, not not entirely true. I'm pretty sure you're looking after a manor, like in Victorian England, like it like it says, um, which in itself is an incredibly cool theme. And when you have words like pride, obsession, and prejudice, you instantly think something like Jane Austen, right? So I'm hoping it's something like that. But either way, I'm pretty sure it involves a manor. So let's get into this anyway. We'll review the little um, expansion afterwards, um, but we'll start with the big box. So first things first, this box feels amazing. It's that lovely smooth texture. Oh, it is so nice. Yeah, the smooth texture. I know the words don't go together, but you understand what I mean. Um, I'm very quickly gonna look at the back of it because this is my new thing to do. Oops, there we go. Obsession, we've got the lovely moors. Um, it's not the most exciting back of the box, is it? It's got their story on it, which is quite nice. Um, and shows you some of the components, but it doesn't really show you any sort of gameplay, you know. I kind of feel like I wish I knew a little bit more about the game from the back of the box. If I was in the shop, I'm not sure I'd pick it up from the back, but I would from the front. Alright, so, now we've done enough rooting around in the box, we'll open it up. Um, and also to note that this is a brand new copy of the game, um, which has been sent to me by Dan Halligan as a review copy. Um, so I'm super excited to get to this because this is a game I really, 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 really wanted to play. And I'm delighted to get the chance to review it. So there will be a review following later, but for now we get to do the unboxing. So the lid's very tight. And it is a ticket to ride size box. It's nice and square. Okay. So first things first, rule book. It's a large size, the size of the box awkward um so there we go so it tells you a little bit about their story the glossy glossary of info um if you want to skip the reading apparently you can just watch tutorials set up gameplay solitaire and more um just cool to know that this has a solo mode i've heard it's a very good one um so game components that's beautiful isn't it the way they're lovely laid out like that you can see everything player area setup for standard play this looks very easy um and it's easy to read the fonts are a good choice too and there's plenty of pictures and the central play area is set up. Now that's lovely because you get to see a full um, rendition of what it's supposed to look like on the table. Um, I think that's really, really helpful when you're trying to set up your game. Um, so it goes through all of those. Then before starting the game, it explains the whole thing to you. I like this, the goal of the game. Excellent. Round track terms, courtship and seasons. Ooh, exciting. Um, and then how to play the game. So I like how this rule book is laying itself out. I like how it's approaching everything. Um, more about playing the game. I love this. Befriend or dismiss gentry. Ooh, exciting. More about playing the game. Different types of tiles. Special actions. Courtship. There's a whole section of what is courtship? I love that. Um, so there's, here we have the solitaire mode. Um, I love that there is one. I think that's great. And you can choose an opponent. That's cool. It comes with 12 opponents. Um, four expert, four intermediate and four beginner. Now, wow, that's actually almost tempting to try and play this solo. So what's on the back? End game scoring. I suppose this is where it really should belong, right? On the back of the rule book. Um, so it tells you exactly what's worth what points, how you get them. Lovely. And I kind of like that it is on the back of the rule book because it's the kind of thing you know you'll leave lying around so you can always check and see, you know, how you're doing during the game or that you're working towards the right, you know, end game scoring thing. Okay, next. A glossary. This is huge. Woo! Okay, so what's this? A short description of item bold below each entry. What? Oh, wow! So, okay. So all the things that are used in the game have an entry in here, is it? There's Alderley Hall. A brushing room. An admirer bonus at Builder's Market. Okay, so it's explaining further um, specific tiles that are in the game. Um, they got their own book. I suppose this makes it very thorough. But it means if you want to look something up, you have to know which book to look in. Um, it's nicely laid out. There's plenty to it. Like, this is huge. Host activity. Exactly what that means in terms of the game. Okay. I can understand why this is here, although I am surprised. But um, I don't think you'll feel like you don't have enough information 
<clears throat> like it just keeps going like look at this there's, there's a lot here I assume this is reference only right does it have like a table of contents at the start no it, it didn't so they're oh they're alphabetized I guess that works um okay okay I'm, I'm with you um I, I guess too much information is better than too little um and then oh even the Wessex expansion is in there as well um some credits and victory points distribution okay um, that seems almost um, extra, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so what do we got? Boards! Okay, so this is... Oh, these are must be um, different families, I'm gonna guess. So, what it says, nothing on the back. So we'll have a look so you guys can see. So this one has the order of play on it, so it must be a player board. I love that that's there. I think that's brilliant. There's special actions, your reputation, and then there's space for sp um, specific things to go on your board. Oh, the Ponce and Bees have the greatest wealth. Begin the game with 300 quid. Woo! What do the York family get? Does, it, does each family get something cool? The York family's service staff are exceptional. Begin the game with an extra footman. I like, oh, I like this very much. And obviously each house has its own special deal. So the Ponce and Bees are super rich. So they got coins. I don't know what you guys are doing with a key, but you got one. The, the Dowager Countess Asquith lives with the family. Begin the game with her card in hand. That's really cool. Uh, and cabinet dish. Okay, they're really nice. Um, they're well put together. The cardboard's really thick and they feel amazing. So that's awesome. Okay, so what's next? <laughs> Ooh, so these must be bars that go set. Okay, so country estate improvements. Okay, so here's all the, obviously all the ways you can improve, improve it. So with essential service, estate prestige and sorting. We must all have one of these, I'd say, as players. Maybe it goes on the bottom of your board. Yeah, there's one for everybody. So obviously this is what we're working towards. Okay, so here is Elderly Hall. Um, so it's a nice small board and I like that there's two sides. So this one has team cards and VP cards. Okay, so it's like a courtship thing. This side also has the same. So what's the deal? There's obviously different. Oh, round track standard play. There we go. Round track extended play. Okay, so I like that there are alternative ways to play the game in the box. That means you get more bang for your book, if you ask me. Um, that's a beautiful piece of art in itself, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's the one from the cover. And I'm very curious to see how courtship works in this. <laughs> I want to know how antiquated it is. Are we just selling women? Probably. Okay, what do we get? Oh, right. So this is like the middle board. The board I'm um, in the middle of the um, your play area. So we've got prices for all the things in the market. The servants for hire, objective cards, and guests. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's a beautiful picture again, isn't it? It's like the moors. Very, very pretty. Anything on the back? Not on the back of that one. Oh lordy, that seems like a lot of punching out. Is the rest of this entirely cardboard? Please tell me it isn't. Oh my word. Oh, okay. So there's this much punching. In case anybody was curious, which looks like that. So five big pieces and punching. So all the tiles have to be punched out and all the money. Um, I'm not punching this all out for you. Sorry, guys. I love you, but not that much. But I will um, pop out something. So we'll do a test. So one of these little roundy things. It says Max. Oh, wow. That is some thick cardboard. Whoop. There we go. Look at that. It's huge. And the tiles themselves. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful quality stuff, actually. It's fabulous. So that's amazing. So that's obviously where all the tiles that we're going to play with are going to come from. Okay, so what else is left in the box? There are two tiles already out here. Okay, a bowling green and a riding stables. Sorry, just the theme. I think the theme is just super cool um, and exciting. So it tells you about their costs and things. Um, there is a bag. Oh, ooh. It looks like a Cadbury's chocolate bag because it's purple with the white writing. It's, it's huge. Like, look at the size of this thing. It's also very, very fancy. Everything in this game is so fancy. I love it. Um, already I'm getting into the vibe of being a, la a lady, a landed lady, as they might say. So what was under the bag? Oh, this is, okay, so you get like scoring, little scoring pads to keep track of everything. I like that very much. Cool, there's not a lot of them, but time to get laminating. Um, will I do the cards first or last? Okay, let's see. This is how I judge the quality of a game these days. But if the little tab on this will work on the first try. That's a quality game right there, people. No more cutting my hands open with the scissors. Okay, so what kind of cards do we have? We have, ooh, well the back is lovely, isn't it? Look at that. They're very slippy. These are linen finished cards, I'd like to say. Someday I want a real definition. 
So Ponsonby family collects tenants' rents. Ponsonby family choose one. So are they all the Ponsonbys? Yeah, this is the York family. So obviously each family has its own deck with some um, very cool portraits. That's an amazing portrait. <laughs> and, and it tells you, it seems to be, that here's what happens or um, some sort of events. Okay, they're very, very interesting. I love the pictures. The pictures are fabulous. Okay, so what else we got? We have another deck of these, which must be for the other families. But yeah, again, we'll do my test. So this looks like where the tab is supposed to be. And it is. See, why is this so difficult for other games? Now, mainly I did break it halfway around there, but I'm most of the way in by now. So I don't, I don't need no help. There we go. Like, that's wonderful. I know it's a simple thing, but you know, being able to get into your game is kind of important to me. Okay, so we've got purple cards this time. Oh, and these are like, are they reminder cards? They are, but they seem like a lot of reminder cards. Servant icons, tile card icons, and passing flowchart. Okay, I'm worried that the game is giving me so many things to help me play that it in, that this in, entails that this might be a difficult game to pick up. Um, hopefully not. So let's see, we've got more of those blue cards for the families, right? So we know what they're about. What are these? Oh, it's for a solitaire play. So they got their own, their own back. Oh, and tells you what to roll. The builder's mark. Oh, look, and here is all the different people you play against. That is just so cool. I love the way they've done that. I think it looks like a really interesting type of solo play. You know, for you to have one player to pitch yourself against. So you can always be like, damn Greta. Or, well, <laughs> name somebody. Damn Brunswick keeps beating me. Okay, and then more of those, these lovely cards. And more families. So we're into Roger Viscount of Benton. Viscount Viscount. Viscount is a biscuit, I believe. Um, <laughs> Cool, so we'll put those in there. And then, whoa, there's more small things. Okay, now this, I'm gonna have to use scissors for. I guess the small things you can't have um, nice little tabs for to save my fingers. Yes, finally. We sh I should have had a countdown time up in the corner of the screen there for that. Okay, yeah, these do look like victory points. I was mostly correct. They're tiny, tiny victory points. They're all the same on the back. And what did they say in the front? So four crowns or two, I don't know, floor leaves, prestige. Four things or things. Seven victory points, five victory points or, or some rocks. A service person or a chair, or sporting. So yeah, so different types of victory points. They are really, really teeny. There must be a reason for them being so tiny because I haven't even got to this bit, which are also stuck in more plastic. Please, please help. Please let this work well on the first try. Oh, there we go, Jesus. Yeah, there we go. There's no way I can leave that in. It's just, I'll have to fast forward everything. Okay, so what do we end up with? Let me go back to them first. Objective cards, okay. And what do they say? So these are all lovely linen finished again, like everything else in here. Bullet room, kennel, kind of curiosity, all required. So they want you to get certain things, do certain things. Yeah, that's grand. Very, very nice. I like it, I like it. I think I finally finished all that. We have one D20, which is a nice shade of purple. I only rolled a seven, I suppose I won't retire it just yet. And then we have a whole stock of meeples. So we'll have to have a look at some of the meeples. We'll pick one colour, any colour. Come hither red. red. Red's always my colour. Although there seems to be less red and more white. Maybe red isn't a player colour. They just look like ladies. You can't see that in plastic. So we'll, we'll, we'll take one of the red ladies out because it looks like Mary Poppins. So they might be guests or something or some such thing. So you can have a look. You have a look at Mary Poppin type figure. Very cool. I like her little hat. <laughs> then, so this looks like a regular set for people because they're white. Also, there's a lot of them. And we have people carrying little, little bags. See? <laughs> it's kind of adorable. There's a single pawn in there as well. Is that the same for all the colors of people carry? Okay, oh wait, so the white people carry bags. The greens 
seem to be wearing top hats. So let's get us a top hat. So you can see they're wearing top hats. That's really cool. I think each different colour meatball is doing something different. There's these blue ones. What are they doing? Oh, they're delivering tea. So this looks must be some sort of servanty folk. There we go. They're bringing you your afternoon tea. Oops. And then what's left? There's the purple ones. I want to see what they're doing now that we've been through all the colours. Oh, and there's black ones too. Black one has a bowler hat on. That is so cool. Okay, so the purple ones look like, I don't know, more little, more little ladies. Yeah, everyone gets a pawn as well, so. Can you see that? Yeah, little lady. And then the black ones. Because I have to go through each of them now because they're unique meeples. By the way, the wood is lovely. These are lovely and chunky meeples. Oh, this one's just badass. It's definitely more weightery. Not oh, this one has like a knock on in it. Hmm. I'm not sure what all of these are for, but they're damn cool. There you go. It looks like a waiter again, but he looks a bit more of a badass with his hat. Very cool. I am very, very much like the meatballs because they're ginormous. Everybody loves a good chunky meatball, right? So we'll put these in here. I will try to put the bag the way I found it. The bag is amazing. Um, yeah, so, so far so good. Everything in here seems of super de duper de quality. Um, you know, without, without question. There's like no, no doubt in my mind, everything in here is very luxe and feels very expensive. It probably was. So now we'll put everything back in and we'll have a very quick look at the expansion because we've been at this forever. Because um, there was just so much stuff inside. There we go. And then all of our books. It's a beautiful box and it looks like a beautiful game. I cannot wait to give it a go. Okay, so next. Do, 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 do. We'll do a little switcheroo. Hopefully I won't need my scissors. So this is the Wessex expansion. Um, yet again, the box feels lovely. It's for one to four players. Um, now, it says on the back, you get a Wessex family player board, meaning we're going to have a fifth player. You get six new solitaire opponents to play with, according to this, and you get to meet the family. So, um, let's see what's inside the box. Ooh. So, oh, I love that. Our story. So, it tells you a little bit about uh, the family. Whoop. Yeah, so this is going to be thin expansion. So, it tells you about the family, what's in the box, which is cool. And rules for the family Wessex. Very good. So these guys have like a string of keys um, as their specialty. And the Wessex estate is the best maintained. Begin the game with either the breakfast room or the tennis court. Very cool. Now, how shall I open this pack up? Well, this looks easier to open than anything else that's come across the table. So first things first, they're the solitaire cards. So they're the new opponents for playing solitaire. I love that they added more. Ooh, okay, put those in the box. And then, so these are the cards, obviously, for the family. I like that each family has its own thing going on. I think there's something interesting. Oh, you see the meeples in the corner, so they must match up all those meeples we saw earlier. So Lady Anne adores the continent, traveling there, for, there, traveling there whenever possible and visiting France once a year. Oh, and you have to pay for her, I see. Okay, so this looks like a really... I like the idea of learning a little bit about your family each. So the expansion, basically, is a new a new player with a new family, which is cool, because the more variety you have, the better. And that's exactly what was in the expansion. <laughs> so if you wanted a little bit more, you wanted to go up to five players, or you wanted some more solo options, I think this is definitely one to pick up. So, in conclusion... Super excited! Can't wait to play this. So excited. Um, you've been watching Board Game Inquisition and we've been unboxing Obsession and Obsession Wessex expansion. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, think about doing something nice, maybe like, you know, liking or subscribing or, or maybe just even telling somebody about the channel. That would be really, really fabulous. And until next time, um, I look forward to meeting you again, um, hopefully at another unboxing. Until then, take care. Bye bye.